know see some people burst, but I thrive under pressure. I hold them down from distance like I was playing catch. I pray to God life is crazy. You know he'll test you. For real, for real. Yeah. You know he will test you. I'm a living legend in the making. Don't care what you think about it. The only time I step inside a bank is for deposit. Failure is always present, but for me it's not an option. Cause I gotta feed my family and I know the critics watch. They don't wanna see you in, so they gon' try to stop it. A humble guy until you cross that line, then I'ma pop it. Choking out the competition on my Sergi Baca. Don't associate with lame haters. They oh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 19 of The Process Show. I know it's been about two months since we did a did a show. We had a lot not of things. Not my going fault. On. Not my <laughs> fault. Not my fault. You know, I told y'all when we started this show. What did I tell y'all? I said sooner or later, DeAndre is gonna big time me. And y'all were like, "No, he's not. He's such a nice guy." Like, no, nope, he's gonna big time me sooner or later. And what happened? No, big-time. no. It's just life. Life is you know life has been progressing. Uh, no big timing. Uh, no, but it's today. Been- it's, it's, I'm really excited because we have one of my good friends, Whitney mm-hmm. Penn Morrow. She is an actress, a producer, a director, a published author, which I'm just finding that out. But she is here. And man, Whitney, I'm first of all, thank you so, 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 so much for being on the show uh, and, being, and being able to share your journey with us. We are so, so excited to have you. Everybody, let's give a warm welcome to Whitney Penn Morrow, everybody. Yay! Thank you, thank you, thank you for having me. I'm excited. Absolutely, I'm absolutely. Excited. Well, for everyone that don't know, Whitney, where are you from? Let's start out with that. I'm from Spartanburg, South Carolina. It's a very small little city, like 30, 40 minutes from Greenville, South Carolina. Yeah, and the traffic on I'm 85 from- is terrible to get to. Yeah. <laughs> You, to get to Spartanburg, you want to get. If you're in Greenville, you want to get on 85. I would say what before seven, seven thirty. Uh, maybe before that. Probably around three o'clock, depending on the day. Yeah, yeah. Because if you go at five, then you're in traffic, and even at seven on a Friday night, you're still going to be in traffic. It's just like, terrible. It's, they, like, For all of our people in. Um, in New York, in Texas, in California, in Virginia, I hope in Miami, I hope this helped y'all out. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, so you, you're from? I hope, I hope he prepared you for me. Uh, by the way, I don't know what he's told you about me, but I'm, he's he's the serious questioner, and I'm the goofball. So I'm sorry. <laughs> it's gonna be no, fun. I, I tell you, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah. But when he, so you're from Spartanburg. Uh, what was it that got you into into acting and writing? What, was that something that was that started as a little kid, or kind of when you got into your adult years? Yeah, yeah. Um, as a kid, I love books. I'm a reader. I love to read. I read a lot. Um, I think when when I really hit high school, it kind of like piqued my interest a little bit more to like tell stories. I've mm-hmm. always always had love of writing and words and how you could express yourself with just words like sometimes no motions is needed but words have a deeper impact and that's what I fell in love with initially so it started then but I really didn't explore it until my adult years where I would really write and write out my feelings and these things I'm like oh you can tell I can tell some stories let me see what I can tell like and I just watching TV one day, and I got sick and tired of watching the same shit. I, can I cuss on here? No, you, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. So I got tired of watching the same shit about us folks, <laughs> about black people. You My know, virgin like, ears. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just got tired of watching the same same stories about black people. Like mm-hmm. we are more than entertainers, hoop stars. We, you know, it's mm-hmm. okay. To, regular ass black person and just be that and it be okay and there were no stories about that it's way more now but that's initially what piqued my interest in wanting to write more relatable content for people of color Mm -hmm. so do you do you remember the first story you wrote because i'm pretty sure you've written a bunch of different stories what was the first story that like do you remember the first story you wrote 
the first story that I really, really wrote, I was in, um, I was in college and I took a creative writing class and it was called, God, what is it called? Um, I personified jeans and it was called blue. What was it? Blue, blue this way or something, something along those lines. I can't quite remember the title of it, but I remember the content of it. And I remember my professor calling me and being like, girl, like, tell me more. Damn, that's awesome. <laughs> that's, that's, that's awesome. You, that know, is awesome. you talked about the stories that were out there about Black people. And we all know the history of looking at things like when the Cosby show came out or certain shows that depicted Black people as having jobs as doctors and lawyers. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we've also seen like the pushback from shows of where they wanted the family dynamic to be a single mom without dad. And like, like we don't want to do the good times anymore. We don't want to do uh, what's happening anymore. Even though those are great shows, that's that's not the perception we want to keep putting out there because that's not a realistic perception. So I love um, that you're doing what you're doing. And you're saying that was a strong driving force in you deciding to write, right? Yeah, yeah it was. Mm-hmm. So which came first, your writing, wanting to act, or producing and directing? The writing came first or the acting? The writing came first. Um, And then I was, I fell into acting by a friend who I was just supposed to just read. Just stand in, we're still casting this role, this character. Just read. I just need you to be a placeholder. Cool. I get on, I do the read. And like two months later, I'm getting the full script and contracts and everything else sent to my email. And I'm like, Johnny, what the hell is this? Like, this is, this ain't what you said. You said, so like, oh my God. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I couldn't find nobody else that was, you know, could top you what you did on the read chemistry wise and just what you provided. So, you know, I casted you and he's like, congratulations. And I'm like, okay, thank you. Damn, that's awesome. So, that's how I fell into the acting piece, but I was more so on the back end with the writing and then the producing and helping out in production. So I I know all sides of it, if you will, in front and behind the scenes, which I love. How, how much of like knowing all sides of it, how much does that help you as an actor and a writer? Because like I play football, right? So or I play football and as a I play quarterback. And it's like, I know about the coaching side. Well, why are you looking at me like that, Keanu? You, you did what? Oh, you want to check tape? <laughs> you, you, play, you play quarterback where? We can, I can check tape, man. I can pull up some stuff well, for you. I'm just, I hope, well, I got to check a tape, but I can just ask you. I, well, because, you know, for some people, they just want to see the film. You no, know? I, I, I believe you. I've, I've worked with you long enough to know you have integrity. Where, where'd you quarterback? I'll, I'll quarterback to Appalachian State, man. Ah, that don't count. All right, moving right along. <laughs> <laughs> but, but how much does knowing all facets of the I guess the business how how much has that helped you as an actor and a writer? Oh my god, it's helped me tremendously. Um another reason why I wanted to do acting in addition to being thrown in it is because on the directing side of it, I didn't want to ask my actors to do anything that I wouldn't do or I haven't experienced myself. Mm-hmm. So it does help in a sense of experience. And when I do look at breaking down a character and bringing a character to life, I'm looking at it past what I feel is needed personally. I'm looking at it from, as a writer standpoint, like what story are you trying to tell here? Because that's what's important. I need to Mm -hmm. stick with your storyline, not my own perception of it. So it helps to separate it there. And it also helps to know Something as simple as like set etiquette when you go on set because people don't know how to maneuver in those spaces and who to talk to and who not to talk to, what to say and what not to say. Who to bother and who not to bother. Yeah, you don't ever yeah. go up to the director asking questions. That's not, no. Yeah. Especially, <laughs> hey, look, that, that's reserved for certain names. And if you, if, that, if you ain't one of those names, you stay on over yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the one good thing that you do know is I remember if DeAndre didn't tell you one of my jobs as an acting coach. And one of the things we always talk about is trying to bring someone's character that they wrote to life. Yeah. 
yeah. you know, and that's why sometimes some people don't get the job. It's not that you were bad. You, you didn't, you weren't what that person envisioned for their character. Right. But, uh, another thing that we were, were talking about, and it's certain, it's great that you brought it up in terms of etiquette, which helped me in my first lead role was when I did some background, I was watching how the main actors would talk to the director and certain questions that they would ask. And when they would did something that wasn't in the script, and they explained why they did that. And so when I got my first uh, role, I don't want to make the story too long, but I did something that wasn't in the script, like a reaction. Mm-hmm. And the director, she said, cut. And now we're good friends. She says, why'd you do that? I said, well, I just feel like the character would have done that facial wise as a reaction to what just happened. Right. She's like, okay, let's put that down. Yeah. And if I never saw the actors do that, like the main actors, I would have never had the courage to do that. No, you wouldn't have known that it was even an option. And it is, right. but the thing about it is it's risky. Mm-hmm. But if you do it, mm-hmm. you better be committed to it. Like, you better yeah. do it, you better hit. Like yes. that. But, again, you would have never known mm-hmm. that had you not experienced right. it. Right. I was taught it's much easier to have a reaction and get it accepted than you. It's different when you start trying to add your own words yeah. <laughs> and do all that. That's a whole different ball. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's awesome that y'all connected on that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. So listen. So on fourth, fourth and three, right? So let's let's talk about this. <laughs> Whitney, I want to I want to kind of go back to the lane of your writing because I know that you have um, a blog that you that you you started. Um, it's called As Told by Wit. Correct? Yeah. I, um, now, when did you first start that? Well, back in the day. I keep on saying back in the day, like in 2015, I had, um, I started to blog. I started to write, but I also started to podcast too. Um, just because I just, I'm a person with a lot of opinions (laughs) and a lot of Mm -hmm. thoughts and feelings. And I'm just like, I can't be the only one like feeling this way and just Mm -hmm. putting it out there. Um, it was also a healing experience for me as well, because at Mm -hmm. that time, I was going through a separation. I was a first time mom. I just was figuring life out, but I still had all these big hopes and dreams for myself. And I just didn't know how I was going to get through it or how I was even going to achieve any of it. So writing and like talking about it, even if it was nobody listening, if it was just to myself, getting it out helped me forge my own path into how I'm going to be able to accomplish and achieve and still be all that I am and not lose myself in the process of. Wow. That part. That part. Yeah. That last part that you said and lose myself in the process. You know, trying to accomplish something that you're trying to accomplish while going through turmoil turmoil or upheaval Mm -hmm. is just something a lot of people aren't equipped to push through without some type of coaching or some type of aid, of course, support system. And and like I always tell people, you're going to get those roadblocks, right? And you've got a couple of options. You can go over it, you can go through it, you can go around it, or you can go home and you chose not to turn around and go home. So was this the more the most difficult part of that transition for you? Yeah. Um, yeah, because I had, I was moved, I moved back to Spartanburg from Florida. Cause I was separating from my husband at that time. Oh, oh what part of Florida? Boynton Beach. It's like the ritzy part. Of okay, Florida. I know where you. I'm from Miami. We about to just get you out the way, DeAndre. <laughs> 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 Let's just get you out the way. All right. I'm from Tampa. <laughs> I mean, I'm a Florida boy. But yeah, we <gasps> there for. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Go on. Let's go with the guests. Go ahead. <laughs> So I lived out there for a little while. I, I I joke about how they kicked me out because I was allergic. The minute I moved there, I got sick as a dog with something that was growing mm. in the air around. So I'm like, mm. Know what it was. probably trying to tell me to get the hell on up out of here. But I mean, <laughs> it was right. So I did. I left. Um, and then I came back home, which was also a very humbling experience for me because I left home at 18 and I said I ain't coming back. But- God has a sense of humor. So I I had to go back home. And even during that time, um, raising my son by myself, that was a new feat because I couldn't, 
I didn't know what to do. Like you mm -hmm. have this baby and you're by yourself and it's just like, I didn't have any help mm -hmm. to configure that out. So it was a very hard time. And then I had to go to work full time. And then I also, again, you have these dreams and these hopes and these aspirations. I was trying to finish school. It was a lot. Oh yeah. You had a lot. There was a lot. It was a lot. It was a lot, but you, you did that. Yeah. Did. Right. I don't recommend that. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot i was in the mud man i some days i didn't think i was gonna make it but uh, but how much of that shaped your writing you know because like the question i wanted to i want to ask is once you published your first blog article mm -hmm. do you remember the reaction that you got from people that read it or was it or how did how, how did that whole thing work for you um for a while, like, it was just me kind of talking to myself because, you know, things take a minute to catch on. And then mm -hmm. when it did catch on, people would come to me personally, like, through mm -hmm. a personal message or a DM or if they'd see me out, they'd be like, hey, girl, you know, I was listening to you the other day and, like, that, you know, that was happening to me, too. I, I, I'm glad you got through it. You know, I tried what you said and blah, blah, blah. So that made me feel good. I got, mm -hmm. I got um, some, some validation in my feelings there yeah. if you will so it, it did feel good to hear that my experience was helping somebody else get through their shit too so i mean it was it felt good but yeah oh look at us writers i'm a songwriter so you know yeah. I, <laughs> you have a lot of feelings too <laughs> dude i have so many feelings no for real like it it really is like i, I really do feel you on that i remember the first time i i started out in poetry yeah. Um, and mm -hmm. I remember the the first poem I wrote. It was called Cold Days. Oh. And the it was it was after my father passed away. And then and there was this whole like, what do you do now? Like, who's gonna teach you how to be a man? What is a man? Mm -hmm. Uh just one, because my father, God rest his soul, um he was in and out. And, and there was also a lot of stuff that I didn't know about him. Um, and I wasn't really close to my father's side of the family to, to be able to, you know, talk to them. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was, let me write what this, what I'm feeling. And so Cold Days was the first poem that I ever wrote. And I, had, I have an uncle whose name is Steve. And uh, he came into my life when I was in elementary school and... I honestly, to this day, I say that him coming into my our family was for me. I truly, truly believe that. Um, and he wrote poetry. So when I read what I wrote to him, it was just like an instant connection. I mean, I didn't publish anything, but it was really cool to read it. And as you say, somebody validate um, what you're feeling and then can be able to, to, to relate to that. So, you know, that kind of spurred my my writing um and then when i got into college it, it it turned into a song so i feel you man you know pound to other to, to another writer you know yeah just feelings just an emotional person but in that though um being a writer has helped me be a better communicator like in the language that i use and when i talk to people and even in that teaching people how to communicate like hey you're not going to talk to me like that. This is how you, you can say this to me and I will mm. receive it well. But what you've said before then, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? What it also helps with that, uh, I always talk about people don't pay much attention to. It not only helps you with the verbal, but it helps you with that nonverbal communication. Yes. That's where people mess up a lot. And I use the simplest one of, we all have that friend that says they're not mad, but you can clearly see that they're still mad. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that verbal communication, those verbal cues, mm -hmm. the, the body language, the mannerisms, when you're writing, you're thinking about all those things as well. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. You really are. And um, even in acting. Like you have to pick up the nonverbal things too in the scene so that you're not just standing there like this, waiting <laughs> looking dumbfounded. Waiting for your, your, your scene partner to speak to you. Like you, you know, you have to worry about your facial features. Like how are you gonna stand? What kind of news are they delivering to me? Like how how 
would I need to be standing to receive what's being said to me? Like those types of things help all all around as a writer. You know, I so I I just started my acting journey, um, and it started in June, and I did a theater play, mm -hmm. and in theater there are stage directions of Johnny now does this Sue looks like that. Uh, and, and I'm noticing in like film, it, it's not, it's not really, really like that at, at all. Um, and then also with theater it's so over the top, not in a bad way, but you have to be like really really big yeah um whereas in theater i'm learning it's it or in in film it it is not that way when you got into acting was it a an adjustment for you to learn to you know as matt talk about putting your body into it versus just reading something and being like just saying what the script is telling you to say was that an adjustment Yes, it was. And I'll even give you this. <laughs> I just learned how to cry and there not be nothing wrong with me. <laughs> I just learned that. Um, which is, and it's, it's so easy in essence when you think about it and when I finally grasped it. Mm -hmm. But for the longest, I'm like, no, I really have to feel it for it to be a good a feeling, like a good cry. Like, I don't want to just be tears streaming and like ain't shit wrong. Like, that's no, that's so inauthentic. But it's such a saving grace <laughs> to not have to carry the load of that character on you, on top of your uh -huh. own shit. So yeah. I need to know how to cry when ain't nothing wrong with me so that I can go home and still have a good day and not be still depressed and sad because I'm mm. still carrying what was on set. But to your point, it just is, it was an adjustment because I had to learn, I had to learn that real life is okay. And when mm -hmm. I say that, meaning how I would normally respond as a normal ass person is okay. Versus yes. the theater, it has to be big, like you said, and it has to be dramatic. And everybody from the, the way back, even in the orchestra section, has to see you and see this expression. And everybody <laughs> needs to feel it at one time. Yeah. Film. Yeah. <laughs> That's why it's such a big difference. Like when I see someone come from theater to TV or film, I'm like, wait, wait, wait. It's different. The worst thing you can do as an actor is act sometimes. It's like have it natural. And the ones who learn like crying, it, it's, crying is such a hard thing for people. And so I try to teach people that if you can't, it doesn't always have to produce. You can sound torn up and crying without producing yeah. tears. It's all about the tremble in your voice, how that voice sounds. And um, the way you can compartmentalize. I know for me, I have, I call it the emotional gun. I need to change it in this climate. So I <laughs> Say I have a bullet with an emotion on it and a thought. And I have a thought that can get me to any emotion when I need to just by simply thinking about it. And people go, well, how? I said, there's stuff you could think about right now that your face would start frowning yep. if you started to think about it because it's still to this day, it p pisses you off, yeah. right? You might be over it, but if you think about it, it might piss you off again. Yeah. Yeah. So, Man, Kiana, you said something um, mm -hmm. to, to me when we first met about pay, att pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> now you said something regarding acting, uh, mm -hmm. that, that has stuck with me. You, you uh -huh. said, um, whatever emotion or a scene is calling for, think about there, there's somebody, you know, that would act like that. And that can help you, kind of go there so like if the scene is a drunk person we all know a drunk person their yeah. mannerisms how they yeah. stand how they yeah. e every little bit that you can just tap into that and that help you you know bring that particular character to life that that has been something that uh helps me um Whitney, has there been scenes Wait, that you hold on, don't just give me that compliment and jump right to Whitney. Are you <laughs> saying are yeah, you saying like you're basking my moment? Give me right. my flowers. Appreciate you, you, I taught you something and you actually retained it. 
Man, I listen to a lot of stuff and retain a lot of stuff that you say. Like, I really, really do. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to let that twinkle for a second. And I'm going to give me an applause. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, Keanu Stevens. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, DeAndre Presley. Yeah. No, but yeah. <laughs> no, but it, it, it has helped, man. And it made, it made, it makes so much sense. Like, um, Again, Whitney and I are in, are in, a, in an acting class together, and there are scene work, you know, that we would have to do. And looking at the script, like there was so much stuff that I'm like, I didn't know. I didn't know you got to create a backstory, that you got to like, you have to do your own work yeah. to, you know, to to bring this character to life. So, was that an adjustment for you as well? No, it wasn't because I was already good at making shit up and like <laughs> I was already good at that you know from from writing stories so with that that was that's the fun part for me I know Justin talks a lot about like falling in love with the process like you have to learn to fall in love with the process well, you have to it is such if you let it, it it is such a depressing career if you think about it and it's just it's not for certain, but you you know you have that thing and you got to make the thing work so you can get to where you need to be. Mm -hmm. But in that, that wasn't hard for me. What that was the exciting part for me because I'm like, okay, who who is this person? Because the writers are only going to give you so much to go off of, and you have to look at the language that they're using to kind of you know, craft how, who yeah. they are in essence as a person because there's nothing worse than looking at somebody on the screen and you know whether or not they they believe in whatever they're doing. Right. So your backstory is important. Um, that is the fun part for me. Um, Zoe Saldana said she lives in the subtext of a character, meaning like their origins, why they believe what they believe, you know, who what makes them who they are. And that's where you live at. And mm -hmm. that was such good fruit to bear. Um, and it was the easiest way to explain what Matt is saying. It's just mm -hmm. the subtext of it. But that part wasn't an adjustment for me. I, I thoroughly enjoyed that part. Because I'm like, oh my God, who is she? Let me see. And then I'm learning on, you know, some accents. So I'm working with a dialect coach so I can even... Right. Right. Man, that is I'm 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 over here just like, dang, man, mm -hmm. that's dope. Because, again, there's so much stuff that I'm learning. I, I do want to ask this. When you started your writing, what was the support you got from family? Because I know that there are people who are like, man, I want to be a writer. I want to be this. And they may not necessarily have that support from family or friends to, I guess, fan that flame that they have what would did, did you have the support um growing up when you first started your writing i had I, my parents are older so you know well that would be i hope so no no <laughs> no meaning like for my age like my dad is gonna be like, i get you like my dad's gonna be like 70 or 71 71 his birthday so like I, my mom had me when she was damn near 30. So, like, it's there. The, we're there. Mm -hmm. So, he, um, acting and writing and those things, that ain't a career to people in that time period. Mm. Just because that's just how you was brought up. I was always book smart. I always made honor roll. I was always going to, you know, strive for that perfection. I was the all amount of American kid, if you will. So those things were supported more so versus the arts part, if you, you get my drift. No, oh, no, I do. I do. Now, how now how did that, you know, make you feel to, to know that, like, man, I love doing this thing, the writing, the arts, and that is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. But I know my family, they look at that as just like a hobby. How did that? you know, make you feel 
coming up. It makes you feel low. Like, I'm not going to lie about that. I think anybody who's ever experienced not getting that support from people mm -hmm. you would want that support from or who you mm -hmm. think just would give it to you willingly because of who they are to you. Mm -hmm. um, having to deal with that is hard. So it, and it was a low moment for me, but that's when that's when the self-validation came into play. That's when my affirmations came to play. That's when me having to build myself up because this is my life. Like mm -hmm. they can have their opinions about my life, but <laughs> I still have to live my own life. And to take that into my own hands and fan my own flame and to be my own support system and be like, we can cry. You can cry about it and feel it, but <laughs> after I hate it. <laughs> We go figure out how we're not going to be in this position again or how we're not going to, we're going to get over this hump. Mm -hmm. So in a way, I would say it has helped me that I did not get that because I feel like it makes me, I'm a bit more stronger in yeah. sense to where I learned mm -hmm. to self-rely more versus mm -hmm. going to those people who were supporting me and needing their consistent validation and like, Oh my gosh, am I doing a good job here? Am I doing a good job here? You know, I, I'm at the stage now where I don't give a fuck. So I mean, either you like it or you don't, and that's just what it is. She uh that comes in two forms too. Yeah. You know, I mean there's more forms than two, but the two most common one is the well, you gotta get a real job, or you know, they sometimes people don't see them if they don't see themselves doing that, they're like, Why would you do that? And then I feel the other time is sometimes parents, uh, especially uh older parents and back in the day weren't equipped to um, handle that. And they kind of help you backwards. For instance, in the beginning, you don't get that support. It's like, well, you know, writer, you know, you need to get like a real job or do a regular thing. And then when you find out later, they're like, well, I just didn't want you to fail and be hurt and disappointed. Well, then why didn't you say that the first time? Right. And, I say that. Yeah. and then I would understand yeah. why you didn't want me to. Because I think a lot of parents, they just... They, when they don't see that as a venue of success, they try to steer you away from it, mm -hmm. you know? And so I always tell younger people, especially teens, if there's something you want to do and your parents feel that that's not a, a way for you to go because it's more of the creative space, you know what? Work a little on the side, get a little money, pay for your own training, pay for your own school, show them that you're invested you know, because a lot of times when you're younger and you want to take piano lessons or whatever and do these things, who's got to pay for it? Your mama, your daddy, yeah. You got money. So you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. And honestly, that's yeah. exactly what it is because mm -hmm. they came up in a time where that was like Willy Wonka finding the golden ticket, you know? <laughs> right. Like, that's just not what people were doing. Like, unless you live like in like a New York or in LA during that time when it was bustling mm -hmm. in the age of movie stars. And then my, my parents lived through segregation. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's not, they have a whole different perception of what yeah. career and what that was supposed to be for me because I grew up middle class. Like, we didn't, yeah. we had a better life than what they had growing up. Right. So What's acceptable like, for a middle class black woman to do as a career as opposed to everyone else? Right, so that was the journey they were trying to steer me yeah. down. Like, we can me and you were case, but your piece you wrote, you know, it's cute girl, we're gonna put it on the, we're gonna put it on for <laughs> Me and you weren't me and you weren't blessed to come out of the womb with muscles and fast twitch fiber muscles. <laughs> Whitney, have you found being a black woman, educated, articulate, have you found that that has um, helped you in your your writing career and in your acting career, or have you found that being a, has it been difficult for you being a woman in this business? I guess it's the question that I'm trying to. I'm trying to get to No, it's not, but it's, it's not as a woman, but as a, just as a creative, just because you work with people with ego and mm -hmm. ego is not a bad thing all the time. I mm -hmm. feel like we all need yeah. ego because ego yeah. is what gives you that confidence to do the thing you need. Yeah. But then there's some times where outside of the thing, the pride comes into to play a little bit and that's what makes it difficult to work with people who aren't 
so open to collaboration or who are so set in their ways that they can't see outside of what could actually work and what could, you know, be added to. So that's, that's the most difficult part, but not me as a, as a black woman mm-hmm. per se. Um, I haven't ran into that just because I do carry a personality about me to where I, if I'm here about the business then I'm out of business. Like, don't talk to me about dinner or whatever it is that you're trying to get on to because that's not what I'm here for. What, let me translate that for y'all. She be having that <laughs> don't bleep with me face on when she be about her business. <laughs> well, yeah, just because now I, I do feel like I have had to do that because I mm-hmm. am a nice person. Like, I... yeah. I'm not going to be rude or to anybody. Like I'm I right. talk to everybody. I'm open with everybody, but sometimes people see that as a weakness and they try me. So I have to, <laughs> I have to. Let them know. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I, I got to be a little like, Hey, don't, don't say that. Don't, don't do that now. <laughs> what, what writing are you most proud of at the, at, at this moment? that I am most proud of. Mm-hmm. I wrote a piece called DNR. Mm-hmm. And it stands for Do Not Resuscitate. And I don't know why it's like creatives. We just it kind of take this, this thing to where we like to think about probably the most morbid thing that we could ever come up with. And it just... And it just took me there I don't I don't even know what possessed me to even write something like this but I just was sitting and I was thinking like what is the worst thing that somebody could probably ask me to do and I still have to live with it and it was for somebody to be you know sick or whatever or like my best friend my sister or somebody you know them sick they go in under the knife for whatever reason or for whatever research that they're doing and then them sign and tell me, you okay. know, if I go, I need my, I need you to be a witness to me to sign off on this paper saying like, if no. I do, this table, do not resuscitate me. So you need to play a hand in my, my going on. Oh boy. Yeah. What am I getting paid? <laughs> <laughs> no, nothing. Like it's just, I, I wrote it from a perspective of like a sick friend, like a sick best friend. Who ah through everything with like you you've grown up together you've done this thing and then they had this i'm always saving you and then you asked me to do this that would be so difficult man because i feel like that's where the selfishness of a person will come into play Uh, and, and what i mean by that is especially if someone was your constant like they were your pillar your post and regardless of whatever age it is, and they tell you, hey, like you said, if, if, if this happens and I go, just let me go. Don't don't bring me back here. OK, that is difficult because there's a part of you that's like, no, 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 I don't no, I'm not ready for that. You are. But I'm not. Yeah. And and oh, my goodness. Wow. I do it. That's so. Hey, I, I, this is all I want. DeAndre, if I make you that person, this is all I need you to do. Once I'm gone, go to my house and clear my internet browser. <laughs> that's, what, that's all I need you to do. Okay. Once, once it front lines, go straight to my house and clear my cookies, my internet browser, the history, everything. Wipe and, it from the beginning of time. Just wipe it. Then take the computer and throw it out the window. <laughs> That is freaking hilarious. Like, where are you going? Don't worry. We already got this established. I know what my mission is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Whitney, yeah, I want to talk about your... Um, so you are a part of an indie series nominated show, Complicated. And I know this was what you read for, uh, re- you were reading for, yeah. and you didn't want it, you didn't plan on getting into this show. Um, and now you are a lead lead actress in this what has this experience been like for you it has been it has been nothing short of amazing and i would and i just i'm so blessed to be working with people who share that same drive and who share that same um 
that same work ethic. Like they, mm -hmm. they want to get it done. And then they're such good people. Like I'm, I'm, I hit the lottery in production companies to work with. Like Showtime is amazing. And for them to look at me as an actress, first of all, when I didn't see myself as one and see mm -hmm. that in me and then hit it, it from that has led me to, you know, getting signed, getting representation and getting, you know, more auditions for more things and more opportunities. I don't, I would have never, ever thought, thought myself to be able to do those things outside of having this role. Um, and then not only that, for them to look at my writing and invite me in to write on season two of Complicated. Gosh, that's dope, man. And that was, and, and I just, I am so grateful for that experience because I got to just run wild with it. And it was just hands down the best experience. And I'm so excited that the series is picking up and it's getting more popular because it really is, a, it's a good series. It's really good. And season two is gonna be even better, like even bigger, even crazier. <laughs> How has life changed for you um, since being casted, casted in, this, in this role, in this show? How has life changed for you? I mean, I get, it's funny um, that people see you and like they recognize you and they know you and they'll be like, oh, but they know you as your character. So a lot of times, like I'll get like, your husband shouldn't hit you. I mean, I hope, I hope they shot his ass and I hope he did. Like, that's what I'll get. <laughs> and you're like, ma'am. And I'm like, it's I, just a show. He's so nice. He's such a nice person. <laughs> <laughs> But he plays the hell out of his character. So, I mean, that's good that we're doing our job when people come up to you and they like they see you as who you play on TV. You're like, yeah, doing my job. Dude, that, yeah, that's dope that, you, I mean, I haven't experienced that yet. I, I mean, I will, you know. But I think that's dope. Like, I think that's me personally. And I'm again, I'm just starting it, starting in this acting thing. But I think that is a testament, testament to the actor, the actresses that, played that role so well that you fully believe that's who they are that you don't you know you can look at the credits and see this is Whitney that's her real name but then you look at her when you do see her in real life and be like girl let me tell you and they can sympathize with the character and you're like man don't that make you feel good as as a as an actress and I never thought that I would be that person like that would happen to because I watch Game of Thrones. Like, I'm an avid, like, <sighs> House Targaryen. They like, need to come with the, the, another season. I'm, I'm, I've been watch. I've been clicking on HBO, and honestly, I'm getting a little, I'm getting a little frustrated. Yeah, it, and it's right. not coming for another year though, like 2024, because it's such an extensive production. Like, yeah. production on that thing is extensive. They shoot all year to get the episodes that we get. But, Dude, um, I love that. I love that show. But, Sorry. <laughs> but the woman who plays Cersei, I can't stand her in nothing she play in. I know she's not that in, in real life. That's not who she is, but I don't give a damn. I cannot stand <laughs> her. I'd be like, oh, I like you. Because she played her role so, so well. well. They all did. Yes. And I'm just like, oh, but her in particular, I'm like, girl, I done seen her in some other movies before. I'm like, I don't like this. Yeah, <laughs> but she's she's probably the nicest person in in life, and I follow her on Instagram, and she's like this huge like benefactor, and she does things for charities and stuff like that. And I'm like, you're really a nice person, but you you play. I'm character. over here watching Willow. Um, you know what? <laughs> you know, what? I feel like you could be a teacher on my favorite show right now. I could be a teacher on my favorite show right now. Abbott oh, Elementary. Abbott I, I, feel like you can, I want to be on Abbott Elementary. Uh, if you were, here's my quiz question for you. I always ask people, if you could be a teacher on, uh, if, if you could be a teacher on Abbott Elementary, who would be the teacher you'd most uh, hang out with like during um, school? Oh my God. Who would you be the closest to? Probably, oh my God, I don't want to say Barbara because I feel like Eric. No, that's why me and Barbara would just <laughs> be all over the place. Because she reminds me so much of like teachers that I had when I was growing up, like in mm -hmm. elementary school. And I just, it's just that mama. 
figure, character, or whatever. But oh, that's not even why I like Barbara. I just like Barbara because she's so shit. <laughs> <She's> so... <laughs> you remember when, uh, I know we get sidetracked, but hey, we're having fun. You remember when Janine walked in and said, the lights are fixed, and Melissa was like, thanks for the update. And Barbara just goes, what are you wearing? Yeah. Like... <laughs> <laughs> like on purpose like you put this on on purpose yeah. yeah you put this on on purpose like what is this all about but i i would i would fight the urge to not go harass her a lot <laughs> but i feel like i would hang out most like with janine and i was Ooh, just like yeah. girl that shit don't make no sense like why are you doing it why would you want to do that person like it don't make sense why, why? so and the reason why i caveated to that because this is an important question because uh you always look at something differently when you're doing. So uh, like DeAndre, I know you look at music differently before you were a writer. Mm -hmm. Before I started acting, I looked at movies and TV shows when I watched them, it was differently. So now that you've written and you've produced and you've direct, how is that different when you're watching a movie as compared to when you weren't doing those things? People don't want to watch movies with me. They don't want to watch television shows with me because, like, I'd be like, oh, my God, that, that cinematography, like, that that shot is dope. I'd be like, mm, that line, I probably wouldn't have said that. Like, I'm critiquing the shit out of it the whole time. I'm just, I've learned <laughs> to do it in my head now, but uh -huh. I'm just watching and I'm studying and I'm learning. And then I'm just like, <sighs> then I go back and I watch it again for just the show. And then, then it's, I it's, it's so crazy how that happens, right? Yeah. My best friend is a costume designer on, he's done Bel Air and all kinds of other things. Nice. And 20 something years ago when I watched the movies with it was fine. But now he critiques every wardrobe, every, every continuity. Wait, that sweater was blue. And I'm just like, okay, stop. Dude, Whitney, we, we would definitely get along watching shows. Because for me, when when this whole thing started, especially film, like I would just watch a show and be like, ha, laugh at it, yeah. feel the emotion. And now I'm like, okay, what what made them what made them do that? Mm -hmm. What made them say what they said the way they said it? Right. Uh, and I know, I know, God, Lee, I know, Danny, get on my nerves sometimes. <laughs> Cause we'll be, I'm saying we'll be in the, the, we'll be watching it, watching a show, and I'll pause, and I'll be like, "Can you believe this yeah. right here?" I wonder. So I, it just, I, I feel like, I just feel like when something becomes super important to you, and you become obsessed with something, you don't see that thing the same, the same way. No. anymore um it, it's like there's an awareness that has been created and now you dive into the the detail of whatever it is that you know you're doing like again when i started playing football i, I used to watch football yeah and then when i started playing football and i started rising up in levels it was just like now i'm just getting to the point where i can just watch a game and not critique anything right but before it would be like uh oh, footwork was sloppy on now and that see that's why he got beat right there and so how often does that happen for you i know you said a lot but like does it happen a lot a lot i yes and no i've learned how to do it in my head so that i can <laughs> you know sit with everybody else and do it but it, I can't turn that off. Like as I'm watching it, like I'm I'm looking at the choices the actor is making. Like why are they moving like that? Like mm -hmm. oh she did this. Oh I hadn't thought about that. Like hmm maybe that's something to tuck away. Like I'm learning as I'm watching, yeah, and even here. from the writing, like I'm learning the plot, the storyline. Like some movies I'll watch and I'll be like it was jumpy. Like I don't get, understand there's holes missing in the story. Mm. So. I watch for that. I watch for how they shoot it because cinematography is everything. How something looks visually, people people always buy with their eyes. They always shop first with their eyes mm -hmm. before they decide if they're going to be sold on something. So if you have something that is aesthetically beautiful, but shit, people will still look at it. Right. Because it's beautiful, but still have the perspective. Like, no, it's, it's just not good, but it's pretty. Right. You know, so I look at all of those things when I'm, I'm watching. I'm just in and still trying to get the storyline and the plot at the same time. 
Right. What what other techniques have you picked up along your acting career that has helped you? Uh, because one of the things I learned from you in one of our classes, you, you said something that to me was so profound. Um, you said, I think it's really good for people to experience the fullness of their emotion yeah. uh, so that you know what it really feel like to be angry. I'm talking about to the point where it's like volcano, lava, fiery, angry, to know what that feels like, to know what it feels like to be sad. I'm talking about in the depths of the pits of it. Um, and when you said that, I was like, oh my gosh, that makes so, so much sense. But the reason you said that was so that you know how to access that. Um, what techniques, what other techniques have you learned, you've picked up along the way that has helped you in your acting? Um, for me, what has helped me technique wise is pulling a little bit. And I think you mentioned that earlier is pulling a little bit of my, of my experiences that I've had when I felt angry in that moment, um, or knowing somebody else who might act that way. So a technique that I have picked up is people watching. I people watch a lot. Mm. I watch people in their real life. Like I try to sit and I'll mimic, like I can do my mama real good. Like I'll sit and I'll mimic people. <laughs> I will, I'll, I'll like just try to pick up little tidbits because people are interesting. I, and the way people think and the way people move, how they use language, what words are important to them, what the words they use most often. Mm -hmm. Like all of that is, is a technique that I've picked up that is mm -hmm. what I kind of absorb and put like in my, my bag for characters. And when I'm going mm -hmm. down and I'm doing a backstory, I'll be like, Oh, it'd be good if she talked with a list or it'd be good if, you know, she moves a little slow or it'll be good uh -huh. if she's a little eccentric. So she might be a little wistful in how she's, gonna flow and carry herself so people watching i would say and got I a question from the audience marcello oh cello from the cello show says do you do the same when you watch yourself do you like watching your parts followed up by he's by him saying are you very hard with yourself as well and same for you d when you played football like when you're watching yourself are you very critical because we're all i like to believe we're our own worst critics i am I am. I'm gonna let Whitney answer first. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm also a little irritated that he didn't ask me. Like I'm not. On the <laughs> well, that's fine, Joe. <laughs> I, I first of all, I I hate watching myself back. Like mm -hmm. I I don't like it because it's just I'm I'm starting to I I look I have to look for the technical things in it now when I watch it when I watch myself back but because I don't like it at all I don't like the sound of like my voice being played but I I don't like it <laughs> just like ah no but I do I am very hard on myself like I'm watching I'm like mm, you could have made a different choice there or you know mm, maybe that wasn't the best you could have delivered that line on whatever but I I am very very, very hard on myself. <laughs> See, he asked you. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, I, I would say for me, uh, I just think it's because of playing football and you have to watch yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I want to see myself not to be like, yo, look, look how good I, it's more of like, yo, what could I have done better? Right. Like, how could I have, like in football, it was like, man, your footwork was terrible on this play. That's exactly why the ball went too high or mm -hmm. it was behind. Um, so I'm I'm comfortable watching myself. I will say I am my, my worst critic. Nobody's going to say anything to me that I have not already said to myself. <clears throat> so when I'm, when I'm being coached, I always ask the coaches, do be brutally honest. Yeah with me like don't hold nothing back because i had coaches that were like if you suck oh boy man they would say things about you that would make you question your existence mm -hmm. in all honesty i had i remember a coach told a kid in college you're a waste of a scholarship you know as a matter of fact <laughs> i'm not gonna say his name but he told a, a kid run up <laughs> run up to the top of the stadium the, the top of the stadium jump off 
And if you live, do it again. I'm like, holy. Hey, look, that's that's the <laughs> look, that's the old school coach. They'll talk about you and your mama. Man, um, what? I remember look, so it, it, in wrestling, I was never the strongest person, right? I was always the skittiest person. And my whole thing was to go in there and let someone take me down and hit a reversal and go from there. Right. And so one day I wanted to try to prove a point. I tried to throw somebody and I fell on my back and I'd lost. And the coach told me, he's like, what are you doing? You don't do that. You're not a stud. You see those guys over there? Those are studs. You, you don't do that. And I was just like, uh. But to answer his question about watching, I don't mind watching myself. The thing I don't and I don't I don't like hearing my voice. Yeah. My voice in my head does not sound like it does when I hear it. Same. Okay. Same. It doesn't sound. It took me so long. It took me to like three years ago to recognize my voice. Even now, sometimes <laughs> something could be playing and it could be me talking. And I'm like, who's that white guy? <laughs> <laughs> and then somebody goes, that's you. Oh, Cello had a question. He said, did the kid get any better? <laughs> no, he uh, fell off the thing and died. Cello, where were you? <laughs> to be quite honest with you, he didn't. Um, but the coach said that to he 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 almost said that to like everybody. It was just that was his thing. That was his coaching style, and yeah. it did hurt a lot of players. I will say that it just shattered their confidence, man. Yeah. Um, but you have to have thick skin. You got to. Yeah. You have to if you want. Well, to. you do. But we've also learned that you know with our children or our students or our kids or our athletes, the best teachers, parents, coaches they learned that, hey, my motivational techniques needs to change to certain people. Some yeah. people, like my sister, you can't sugarcoat it. You got to kick her in the ass. That's how she played sports. Yeah. And same with me, but you've seen the people that you're like, hey, let me pull you to the side and have a one-on-one -on -one with you. Some people need that. Some people don't. Some people need to be yelled at. You know, some people still like you to grab their face mask. But don't you do know? that. Don't, and, don't. Well, I know, but I'm saying some mm. people, you, you said don't do that, but then there's that crowd that loves that. You know, and I find it the same with um, actors and yeah. same with models. Everybody, you got to figure out how to get the best out of that person. And sometimes you have to curtail it to them. And it's it's less about you yeah. and more about them because the effectiveness, your effectiveness is how well the people that you're mentoring succeed right. or do. So right. I'm the, I'm the, I'm just the type of person that like I'm going to match your energy. So mm -hmm. I've I've been in practices where I've messed up. Like if I mess up something, I already know I messed up. I know you don't have to come at me and yell at me. You don't need to do that because if you do do that, it it's not going to be great. So I'm the type of person that's like if I've messed up. Just mm -hmm. be like, hey, man, this is what you did wrong, you know, and, and then and let me go about my business. But if you come in like, you stupid mother, that's we I've gotten into some altercations. Yeah, I, I just I don't that's... I don't I don't like being yelled at because I I'm not that type of person. I'm not going to yell at somebody like that. Right. Uh, so I don't you want gotta to tell that huh? as a coach. I'm not going to yell at you, but I might need to yell at Brian because Brian needs to be yelled at. And, and Whitney's going to love this one. What you just said about, I already know I messed up. I remember my grandfather was such a smart aleck. Like, I remember knocking over like a gallon of milk and it's spilling. And my mom is just, what? Blah, 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 blah. And my grandfather just calmly walks by and goes, while you're yelling at him, the milk is still spilling. That is so true. Whitney, what would you say is your coaching style? Or how you like to be coached? I know it involves the S word. It does, <laughs> like it does a lot. Um, which is why I love Matt. Matt's my coach because I don't. I'm an adult. Okay, you can curse. <laughs> you can curse, yes. and you can just yeah. be like, I. I'm perfectly fine with you getting straight to the point and be like, girl, that that was terrible. Do it again. Mm -hmm. I don't know what yeah. that was like, but yeah. and I'm okay with that. I can do that. Now, if I'm talking to somebody else, and I think that's when the parenting part comes in and me being a parent, mm -hmm. is with my son, mm -hmm. I had to learn that because Whitney can take that. Does it mean, yeah. My son can't do that. So mm -hmm. I had to learn how to talk to him 
we're still very blunt with each other. Like, hey, blah, 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 and this is what it is. And he's like, okay, cool, I'll take it. But the yelling, he's gone. He's not, mm. he doesn't hear me. He doesn't, he's right. not, he shut down. He's oh like, my God. I, I don't. Wow, wow. You got and you got to know that. I remember my niece. You could yell at her. You can curse at her. You can hit her. You can do all that. But the way to get to her is to tell her you're disappointed. Yeah, works. Right? That, oh. that. Uh, yeah. Whitney, we're gonna have to do a part two. We yeah. definitely have to do. Time flew. It really. Yeah. Oh my god, we've been on here an hour. Yes, yeah. we have. It feel there. Like so we ha before we get to our segment, I do want to ask one more question, okay. and that question is, what advice? would you give to um, aspiring writers, actors, producers, what advice would you give them as they're on their journey? First things first is you believe in yourself. Above all, like if you have a dream and you have a vision in your head, I truly believe that the universe, God, whatever higher power you choose to serve and believe in has given that to you for a reason. You are obligated to let that thing out like if it is in you then the world needs that so on your journey just remember that you're not always going to feel that and that's okay but you still do the thing you do the thing even on days when you don't feel like doing the thing because it's going to pay off in the long run you got to keep going and if you haven't started just do it just do it and even if you're just writing two or three lines a day you're writing do it just do it. It's, even if you're just in the mirror, you know, pretending to be somebody else, that's acting. Do it. Just do the thing. Just get started. That's all. And be confident. Wise words from Mrs. Miss Whitney Penmorrow. Whitney, you. we appreciate you so much. We have reached a segment where we, on the show, we do what we call weekly wins. And in our crazy world, where there's so much drama and craziness going on we like to focus on just one thing that has gone that is going well or one thing that we're grateful for so we're gonna let you start out with what is your weekly win we always <laughs> i do it wrong every time don't i every time. That's <laughs> <to be done. laughs> it's supposed to be me right yeah we always let the guests so that the guests <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> or me. Just one of us go first. Oh, okay. I didn't go. I didn't go. I didn't go first. I was gonna let her go first. No, I know. With the guests, we always let them go after it, so they can kind of get the feel of it. Every time, every time, man, it's every single time. Okay, all right. You know. So my weekly win is this, and I wanted to wait until we got on the show because I wanted to share this with Kiani as well and you. Uh -huh. So I auditioned for a movie in Charlotte. Um, it's called Break the Cycle. Um, and I, I sent in an audition tape and the casting director, you know, we went back and forth. Long story short, I got casted in a supporting role for one of the characters. His name is Marty Mudrick. And so I'm going to be in my first movie and it's called Break the Cycle. And it's about this true story about, thank y'all. Uh, it's about this, it's about this, um, this, I don't want to say it's a charity, but this pro project called uh, Proverbs 226. And um, it's about this guy who started this program to reunite incarcerated fathers with their children. Um, yeah. So I play one of the incarcerated men in the movie. And it, it's going to be a really, really, really powerful movie. So that is my weekly win, guys. Yay! That is awesome. Congratulations. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. I've been chomping All at the right. people. So your first role as a black man, you're playing an inmate. Great. <laughs> um, <laughs> wonderful. After she gave that whole speech in the beginning. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and you go and play inmate. And you go play inmate. Oh man. <laughs> Ah. That, that's Keanu. I love you, man. That, my <laughs> weekly that, win. That um, comedic goal. That, that was. <laughs> what was my weekly win? Oh, I paid my rent on time. I paid my <laughs> rent on time. Oh, wait, I'm lying. Um, so, uh, my weekly win is I cleaned up my QuickBooks. Nice. Uh, that thing has been haunting me for 18, uh, for, um, sorry, for 13 months. 
Right. And so this year I get to pay my taxes for my business for this year, for last year and the year before, because I ain't paid taxes two years. So I get to get that off my that headache off my plate. So that is my weekly win because Hey, everybody out there, if you start a business, make sure you know all the things you're supposed to do about your taxes because I thought I knew what I was supposed to know and I didn't know what I didn't know and I didn't know what I didn't know. Um, I guess my weekly win... Well, that's all the time we have, guys. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, my God. I love you. You're so funny. Oh. Um, I guess my weekly win was when nominations came out. Like that was dope. We had just got that news. So yeah. Dude, that's wow. Awesome. She's the first guest in 13 shows and not say my weekly win was being on this. Uh I know. And you know what? Sorry. No, no, that's great. That's great. That's great. Cause oh, I wait, think let's rewind it. Wait a minute. Ask me again. Ask me again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good. No, that's actually awesome. No, that's that's that really good. That's awesome. really awesome. That's really, really awesome. Man, I just I remember when I first saw the clip of you in action on complicated and I was just like I was blown away, dude. Like I'm serious because like the character you play, and when I saw you in class, I was like, damn, she played that really good. Like I I know several people that that is they that they'll pop off in the hand on just like that and i was just i'm just like man yeah. i told you this in class i am a huge 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 fan and when when whenever you go up and you're doing the homework and stuff man and i'm looking at your clips i am like i'm i'm studying you really honestly because i'm looking at how you're doing stuff and i'm like oh shit let me see what i can what i can take and you know put my little twist on it but I'm a huge fan, and I am so grateful that you came on the show. You shared your story. Um, so thank you so much for being on here. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Got to do a part two. Got to do a part two. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you guys for having me. I absolutely no problem. I'm glad you enjoyed. I Tell all your friends who's doing something to get their butt on this show. I sure will. <laughs> I'll send you some. Seriously. Seriously. <laughs> Well, guys, man, we appreciate y'all for tuning in. Um, this has been awesome. Whitney, again, thank you. Kiani, I'm forever grateful for you. Um, everybody, thank you, and we will see y'all next week. All right. I'm disappointed. I really thought we had Whitney Houston. <laughs> <laughs>